Hey everyone, this is Tanya Atomic and this is my review of Dr. Sleep. I love Dr. Sleep. <laughs> Let me just get that out of the way. I love Dr. Sleep. Um, I saw the movie. I enjoyed it. I didn't know how much I loved it though. I, I kept thinking about it. I saw it like a week ago. Ever since then, I've thought about it every day, at least once, and um, I've been wanting to see it again. I loved it and didn't even realize how much I loved it. Um, it's interesting. Basically, I'm going to try to do a spoiler-free review, but basically it is the sequel to The Shining, but it was based on the book that Stephen King wrote as the sequel to The Shining. And, and, you know, at first I heard, oh, there's a sequel to The Shining, and I was like, what? Like, it's like many years later, and that just sounds kind of weird, right? I mean, to me, anyway. I didn't know that, that Stephen King had written Dr. Sleep, so it was a surprise to me. Um, it At first, my initial reaction was kind of like if somebody had said, um, you know, someone that you don't never heard of just made Citizen Kane 2, kind of. Um, it kind of had that feel <laughs> to me. I didn't know much about it, and so that was my initial reaction. But then when I found out more about it, that it was based on a book, and, um, you know, I, I had, I was a little bit familiar with some of the people making the film, and the, the actors too, and I, and it, I, knowing that it was based on the book and not just some studio writing a sequel to have a part two movie made me want to see it. I felt like that was more, less than, less of a cash grab and more of an actual like movie made for artistic reasons. And, um, so I did go and see it. And basically, um, what we have is a Karate Kid 2 situation where it takes place almost exactly after The Shining first movie takes place. Um, it's not exactly like locker room shower right after, but it's kind of like maybe a month or a couple months after, which is to me kind of fascinating. I mean, it takes place right after and then it, it and it's kind of like epic in a way where it spans many years um, and goes maybe 40 or more years. Um, it does, you know, skip time. It's like this happens and then 10 years later and this happens eight years later, that kind of thing. Um, so it does skip time where you get the idea that things are kind of going the same. Things are kind of going normal for the characters. Um, and then it picks up when the action picks up. Let me tell you the things that I thought Dr. Sleep did well. Um, the things I thought it did well is it actually felt the same to me emotionally as reading a Stephen King novel. And um, when I was younger and I was just starting to read horror, I started with Stephen King and I read a lot of his um, novels. Some I liked, some I didn't like, and some I loved. Um, the Shining I did like. Dr. Sleep, the film, felt like reading a, a Stephen King novel. The way the, the characters dialogue, um, the pacing, the tone, the feel um, of the look of it even. Um, it just felt like reading a Stephen King novel. I don't know how close to the book it is because I haven't read it yet, um, but like I said, I would like to read it. The other thing it did well was making it Danny's story. Um, the The original film, The Shining, Stanley Kubrick, you know, of course, is a masterpiece, but and, and it is like the book. I'd re I read The Shining and I was impressed with how much the movie is like the book. However, um, the book is very much Danny's story and not uh, totally the parents. You know, the, the story does touch on the parents and goes to them. But I felt like in the movie, it becomes the parents' story, especially the father's where emotionally I felt like the book was emotionally Danny's story and it and the movie actually took out something at the end of the book which I wonder if um it just didn't feel right or time wise they had to cut it but there was something at the end that was more you know had more to do with Danny more stuff was going on and um 
it just took away from being Danny's story, which is fine as a movie. I think it's still good, but it didn't match the novel um, that way. Now, Dr. Sleep, it, he becomes Dan. He goes by Dan now. And um, it is very much his story emotionally throughout. There are other characters that come in, and there's another character that, that we do feel a little bit of a main character with. Um, she's a little girl that he meets um, psychically because she also has the shining, you know, she also shines. And um, so they connect and she becomes sort of a foil for his character. And um, what's going on with Danny is he is very traumatized by the things that happened to him um, from at the Overlook Hotel. And so the, the, he spends his, the rest of his life battling his demons and trying to come to terms with those things or running away and not trying to come to terms, um, but doing that in, in, in sort of a, in hiding. Um, and this other character that he meets is quite different, very, very much brighter, very much more brave, but she's a little older too and didn't go through the trauma. I mean, it's totally understandable why Dan is in the trauma type state. The other character never had to go through those things. So she, um, is a little bit braver and I think in general, a little bit braver because she's a little bit older too. And so she's a sort of foil for him, but also an important, um, she's an important character to him because he can see how it can be different. Um, so that's really nice. And, um, I hope I'm not giving away too much with that, but, um, I'm trying to be vague. <laughs> I hope I'm not giving away too much, but I am trying to be vague. Um, but anyway, it does that really well. It... It, it does the like terror element and the evil part of the bad, there's bad guys in it. It does that really well. And there's actually a scene and I do want to say ahead of time, even though this, this is a spoiler, um, there is a little bit of stuff in here involving child violence to children. So if that bothers you at all, avoid this because it was pretty intense. Um, it makes sense in the movie. They don't show anything too explicit, but they show a little bit. I mean, it's, it can be intense. And the reason why is because it, um, shows you things about the characters and very implicitly. So, um, it's important to be in there, but at the same time, if that's a subject that is touchy for you or, um, you know, if that's a subject that is tough for you, then I would say, this movie might be a little bit tough as well and keep that in mind. Um, so it does that really well. The pacing is amazing. It, um, tells a lot of story. A lot is going on and it keeps going. It's like boom, 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 down the line of events. Um, and it does feel full, but at the same time it, it breathes. Um, it never feels rushed even though it, even though you seem like you're going from scene to scene to thing to thing, the pacing takes care of it by letting certain parts breathe. And I thought that was done really well. So the pacing I just loved, the, it's my personal preference pacing, but I realize that pacing is cultural kind of, <laughs> and um, it has a very American style pacing. Um, it is, pacing can be cultural, it can be personal, um, but it has a kind of pacing that I like, that I feel comfortable, that I feel like um, doesn't distract me. So I'm never distracted by anything in the film. I'm taking everything in, all the dialogue, all the action, everything that's happening, all the emotional things I'm taking in because nothing in the film distracts me. There's no, there's no like overblown anything. There's no um, pacing strangeness or anything like that. And so I felt very immersed. Um, that said, there is some stuff that connects to the first film, first story, which I was worried about this stuff. I thought it might be kind of cheesy. Um, this was the kind of stuff I was worried about. Um, what they do is they have the same characters from the original film and the original story. And 
they look like people from Stanley Kubrick's The Shining and kind of act like them. But I think they do it well. That what it what they're trying to do with Doctor Sleep is make a seamless connection so that you could watch The Shining and then watch Doctor Sleep and feel like they live in the same world. And I think they did that well. Um, they use a lot of tricks to do that. Like I said, they use some actors that look like the original actors and that are kind of acting like them, but not um, cartoony. It's not cartoony. They actually do it well. Um, that It's something that I feel like could have gone wrong so easily. All the references to, to the original film because it makes sense because Dan is, he has flashbacks and also at the beginning um, they show, you know, like, I think it's his memories of what had happened or something like that. And he does have flashbacks later and then there's things um, at the end that kind of connect, that kind of come full circle type thing. Like I said, I'm trying to keep it vague and not tell you <laughs> what it is. But um, because of that, we do see things that are similar from the first movie. They set it within the world of the first movie, although it's very different. They don't try to mimic Stanley Kubrick's style. They don't try to make other things look the same. Um, only the things that were of the world that we saw already in the first film look the same. Um, everything else is, is modern. Or, or modern to where the story is set, whatever time they're in. So um, they did it really well. There were a few moments that I was like, meh, eh. But <laughs> it's like a two and a half hour movie, and there, there's maybe like three moments. But at the same time, I can see why they did those things. So, you know, whatever. It's not my movie. I didn't make it. <laughs> Someone else made it, and it's up to me to watch and try to understand where they're coming from and um, I do feel like I understand why they made the choices that they did and why it also makes sense in the narrative of the film that's the other thing nothing felt like fan pandering nothing felt like it was put in because the studio thought it would sell or give people like this moment <laughs> or anything like that I mean there was one thing that I felt like maybe could be like that but I'm gonna let that go <laughs> Um, but yeah, most of the whole film did not feel like that at all. And that I appreciated and I was surprised. And there was an actual story that was a different story that was going on. Um, but it was very interesting and very different and different tone and all that stuff. So it really did feel like the story of a, a man who had grown up having a traumatic experience and um, other things are happening his, in his life, but certain things are bringing him back to that to make him deal with the past trauma. So that's basically what the film is about. There are themes of death and dying and um, the quest for immortality, a fear of death. And I feel like all of that was done really, really well. I was really interested in that part of the story. I liked seeing um, those different themes played out and and with the different characters and how they handled um, the fear of death, death and dying. So so that was a big part of the film. Um, fear, fear of death, death and dying, um, wanting immortality, um, how you handle th those feelings, how you handle the, the afterlife. There was also, you know, the shining stuff, the psychic stuff. There's like the bad guys and they're having to figure out how to deal with that, how to get away from them or fight them, and and that going on with the psychic stuff. And all that together, just, I mean, all those things I, I found so interesting, and I felt like it was just handled really well and just done really well. The The casting was amazing, the acting was, was really well done, and the references to the original movie, like I said, for the most part, really worked in a surprise, it surprised me, it was in a surprising way, and um, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, um, when I came out, I felt entertained, but I've been thinking about 
the movie and the story ever since. I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see it again and I want to read the book and um, I just thought they did such a good job. Um, who would I recommend this to? I would I would definitely 100% recommend this to anyone that enjoys Stephen King. Any Stephen King fan, if anything I said piqued your interest, I would say that's also for you. It's not going to be, it's not The Shining Part 2. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not The Shining Part 2. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's not um, done in the same style as The Shining at all. And um, it um, has a different feel, although it lives in the same world. So, and I thought that that, in that way, it works um, because it's different because it's made differently and has a different tone, the story is different. Um, it lends to that and I think it really works. If you like stories about like psychic stuff, psychic fighting, I don't know, <laughs> psychic fighting, I don't know, um, or using your psychic powers to get out of danger. That, <laughs> if you like that kind of thing, um, you will probably like this film. I, I would definitely say if this intrigues you and you want to see it, go see it in the theater while it's still out. I don't know how much longer it's going to be out. This is definitely a film for, for, for me that has my heart and that um, I recommend. Um, I don't think it's for everybody. I could see people having fault with it or maybe not liking some of the horror elements or the violent elements. Um, or people who want to see, you know, more like The Shining Part 2, then maybe not. Or if, if referencing that movie at all would, you're such a purist that referencing that movie at all would bug you, then, then maybe not. But I would say it's worth checking out anyway, because I was skeptical and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I do love, you know, having to use your psychic power to get out of danger type stories. I also love, you know, having to be sneaky and get away from the bad guy type stories. And I also love, um, when stories are very respectful and handle issues of death and dying and fear of death and fear of fear and trauma type things, um, when that's handled really responsibly. I also like that too. So for me, I, for, it's a kind of film for me. That's what I'm going to say. So, um, let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, do you agree or disagree with me? Have you seen it? Have you read the book? I'm actually interested in talking about it more. So comment. <laughs> anyway, um, I will keep the reviews coming as long as you guys keep watching. Thanks for watching.